you so much. Um, this, it's a huge honor to be here, and I want to thank everyone for coming out and our group, yay, we won the Goldman Prize, oh my god, who I knew are watching from at home. Um, our campaign to fight the incinerator has always been about storytelling, so I'd like to share one with you now. I'm from Baltimore, a place that is on the front lines of many injustices, from police brutality, racial discrimination, economic inequality, and environmental injustice. All of these stem from a system that is morally unjust and threatens our lives and the future of our planet. I'm talking about a system that wouldn't think twice about the plan to build the nation's largest trash burning incinerator less than a mile away from my high school. An incinerator that would be the worst source of mercury, of brain damaging mercury in the entire state that is permitted to emit two million tons of greenhouse gases per year, both worse than coal. All of this in a community with the highest levels of toxic air pollution in the state, where my neighbors, family members, and friends' lives are cut short because of where we're born. Where past generations literally lost their homes in the land beneath their feet displaced by polluting industries and environmental injustice. In Baltimore, the number of deaths related to air pollution is higher than the homicide rate, and 50% of deaths in my community are avoidable. The fact that legally, in my state, burning trash is considered a renewable energy source to receive public subsidies for climate solutions like wind and solar is a clear sign that our system is failing us and our planet. This is why we have to take the lead. Those directly impacted by the injustices we face who know firsthand that this is a matter of survival and that there is a need for a new vision that is based on our basic human rights, environmental justice, and the belief that all life is sacred. We decided that it isn't the fate of our community or our planet to be a dumping ground. And I am incredibly proud to say that after months of struggle, residents sacrificing their freedom of being imprisoned, that our state government has enforced the law and terminated the incinerator's permit to construct. <laughs> this is a victory and a testament to building grassroots, grassroots community power. Building on this recent victory, we are now calling on FMC Corporation, the company that owns the land, to release the 90 acres of land being held by Energy Answers, the company that had planned to build the incinerator. This will make way for community-driven development initiatives, including community -owned, a community-owned solar farm. So I'd invite everyone to join our fight for justice to go, and to go to unitedworkers.org and sign our petition for FMC to free the land and to end public subsidies for trash incineration. I want to end with this very important point, that our survival as communities, as states, as a nation, as a human race depends on our ability to mobilize, study, reflect, and take action together. Thank you.